Hello friends! Today we're going to make a mini-map that shows what's around our player character, as well as which direction both the character and the camera are facing. Let's start by adding a control node to the canvas layer and naming it Minimap. I'll anchor my minimap to the top right corner of the canvas layer, and reset its size to 0 since this node isn't drawing anything. The minimap requires two components, a sub viewport which will be used to view our surroundings from a different angle, let's name it view from above, and a texture rect node which will draw the rendered image from the sub viewport. Let's name this the viewport texture rect. Then in the inspector we will populate the texture with a new viewport texture. Clicking on the new viewport texture to expand it, it has only one property, the viewport path, which we can populate with our view from above. The view from above isn't drawing anything yet because it doesn't have a camera, so we can add a camera 3D node as a child of the viewport. With the camera 3D node selected, let's position it above the player character then point it straight down, rotating about the x-axis negative 90 degrees. Switching to 2D view, we can see our camera's view is being rendered by the sub-viewport, then drawn onto the texture rect on the canvas. How much of the surrounding area is shown is being affected by two things right now, how high above the character the camera is positioned, and the field of view angle of the camera. But adjusting these to see more of our surroundings either moves the camera too far away, causing draw distance problems like culling, fade, blur, or it skews the perspective. Instead, we'll switch the projection property of the camera from perspective to orthogonal. Now instead of having a field of view angle, an orthogonal camera has a size property. We can specify the exact distance away from our character we want the minimap to view and draw. Using a size of 30 meters, the minimap will show everything within a 15 meter square of the character. With perspective no longer a factor, the height of the camera no longer matters, as long as it is above the character looking down. But what if we want the minimap to be round? Let's add another texture rect to the minimap and name this one Mask. Set its texture to be the shape you want the minimap to be. I'll use a simple circle. Then in the visibility section under properties inherited from canvas item, we can change the clip children property from disabled to clip only. Now this circle is not going to be drawn, but instead used as a mask that will clip any nodes childed to it so they fit inside this texture. Setting the viewport texture rect as a child of the mask, the minimap is now a circle. I'll now adjust the size of my minimap by setting the size property of the mask and re anchor it to the top right corner. The viewport texture rect can then use full rect anchors to copy the exact size and position of its parent. I'll then adjust the size of the sub viewport to match. To have the minimap camera follow the player character, we need to attach a simple script to it. I'll sort it into a folder for UI scripts. We'll just grab a uniquely named reference to the player character and another to the minimap camera. Then during the process function, ignoring delta, we can set the global position of the minimap camera to be the character's global position, plus however many meters up we want it to be. Now the minimap camera follows the player character as they move around. But the contents of our minimap aren't all that helpful. It's difficult to know which way the player character is facing and which way the camera is looking. Let's start by adding a Sprite 3D node to our player character, and name it something like Player Indicator, giving it a unique name. I'll use this big blue pointer. 
but in the transform section, I'll unlink the scale properties and adjust the Y to be twice as big, so I can easily tell which way it's pointing. Then rotate it negative 90 degrees about the X axis to lie flat at the character's feet. Then expanding the flags section, we can use no depth test to tell the camera to render this image over the terrain. I'll also adjust this image's import settings to pre-multiply alpha to remove the bleeding from the edges. Since this sprite is only meant to be drawn by the minimap camera and not the main camera, we will need to change its render layer. I'll use layer 11 to keep it far separated from other parts of my game. Selecting the game's main camera, we can tell it not to draw this render layer. But the minimap camera is also drawing our player character. We can do the same thing to have the character drawn by the main camera and not the minimap camera. Opening the character scene, we just need to select any of their Mesh Instance 3D nodes and change their render layers to something different. I'll use Layer 2. Then select the Minimap Camera and tell it not to draw Render Layer 2. In the Project Settings, we can name our 3D render layers to keep them organized. Since my characters do not rotate at the root level, they are rotating a child node inside their local scene, I'll need to have my player indicator match the character's rotation as well. In the Minimaps script, grabbing a unique reference to the indicator, I'll just set its rotation Y property to be the same as the character rig's rotation Y. A function in my character script that is just returning the global rotation of the character's rig. Now the player character is replaced with an arrow on the minimap that rotates to the direction they are facing. But we may also want to know which direction the camera is looking to, and we can achieve this following the same process. Attach a sprite 3D node to the character. This time we'll call it Camera Indicator and give it a unique name. Instead of using an imported texture, I'll just create a new gradient texture 2D. Gradually changing color from the bottom left corner to the center of the texture. I'll set the corner of this texture to be white, but with half transparency and the middle to also be white but fully transparent. Making sure the point is exactly in the middle to form a perfect triangle. I'll set its size to be 512 pixels squared. Then offset it by half that, so the origin of the image is the half visible corner. I'll change the No Depth Test flag to True, drawing it over top of everything else, and change the texture filter to Nearest, Mip Map, and Isotropic to remove the bleeding edges. I'll rotate it negative 90 degrees about the X axis so it lays flat on the floor, and then rotate about the Y axis 45 degrees to put the half visible corner at the character's position. And finally, put it on Render Layer 11 along with the Player Indicator. To have the player indicator draw over top of the camera indicator, we can adjust the render priority of the player indicator to be 1. Back in the minimap script, we can grab references to the camera indicator and also the main camera. Then set the global rotation Y of the indicator to match the global rotation Y of the main camera. Plus the 45 degree difference expressed in radians as pi over 4. Now our minimap shows a clear view from above the player character with the special indicators depicting which way the character and the camera are facing. The same techniques can be used to draw map icons for enemies, treasure, or quest objectives.
You can also change the material of the viewport texture rect to a shader material, altering how the minimap is drawn through a shader script. We now have a fully functional minimap for our game. I'll see you in the next lesson.